Debate in the House of Commons this afternoon after the feds announced they would grant BC's request to recriminalize the use of hard drugs in public spaces more than a week after the province made that request. BC is currently just over a year into a pilot project decriminalizing the consumption and possession of small quantities of hard drugs, a harm reduction strategy aimed at curving overdose deaths. But the public consumption has also raised significant public health and safety concerns, leading the province that asked for the pilot project to want this part of it rolled back. With us now is the federal minister responsible, mental health and addictions, Minister Yara Sachs. Hi, Minister. Good to see you here live in studio. I appreciate you making the time. Thanks for having me, Vashi. I'm thrilled to be here. I wanted to start off by asking about the, the way in which this unfolded, and in particular, if you would have, if BC didn't make this request, if you would have considered amending the exemption anyway, given the public safety concerns that were being brought to the public's attention? So I think that's a great question, but when we start looking at the announcement today, BC came to us and asked for this amendment to their proposal. And it's not the first amendment that we have made to their proposal. When we embarked on this journey at BC's request to do this pilot program starting last year, we always said we would have a clear view on public health and public safety. We wanted the balance there. But we also said we would monitor, assess, and, and amend and be flexible because it is a pilot and it's really an opportunity for us to learn with BC steering this ship to, to see what will work in addressing the overdose crisis. The, the genesis of my question, though, was because BC essentially introduced legislation to try and do what your government's approval today essentially does for it. It faced just challenge, it faced challenges in the court that basically halted their efforts to recriminalize the use of hard drugs in public spaces. You you would have been watching all of that unfold. Sure. Did you as a federal government think to yourselves, maybe we should address this at this moment in, instead of wait until BC comes to us? So this is really a collaborative relationship on the BC pilot program. And each time we have worked with BC with the data updates that we get, perfect example was the amendment that they asked for last year is that they came to us and requested to shift in, in addressing public, public use in specific spaces. We worked with them on their amendment and that's what they used to go forward with the legislation. But this is BC's pilot. The Section 56 exemption is one piece of the puzzle of what they're trying to do overall in addressing the overdose crisis, and that's what we've responded to today. But I guess I'm trying to ascertain on behalf of Canadians what exactly the federal role is, because their pilot project could not have gone ahead if your government didn't approve it. So if you see that despite the best of intentions, things are not working as you had anticipated they should, do you wait for BC to come to you, or do you have the prerogative to say, hey, we've got to amend this? So. As I've said before, and we've been very clear about this, this is a partnership. This is a work what collaborative. Does that, mean? that means that we don't take decisions unilaterally here. We we work with the data, we work with the evidence, and we work with the province of jurisdiction to look at this from how they are implementing their pilot. Because de the decriminalization, the exemption, is one piece of a broader puzzle when we look at how we're addressing the the, the overdose crisis. The decriminalization piece specifically was to ensure that people who use drugs have a doorway to health care. So this is only one piece of what is the broader pilot that BC is embarking on because they have health services that are involved with this, harm reduction services that are involved with this. This is one tool in many tools that they're using. And I do understand that. I have questions on the, the, the broader approach in a moment. but. This is the part, this is the tool that has generated such a public response, right? And and I don't think it's, you know, I understand the, the part of this that is focused on reducing harm and reducing stigma and making sure people who are suffering are not criminalized for their behavior. But I think it's also, you know, Canadians also understand the concerns being raised by nurses, the concerns being raised by people in public spaces, on buses, on public, other forms of public transit. And those concerns are not new. And so what I gather from what you're saying is unless BC comes to you and says, we need to change something here, you're not willing to tell them that they need to change something, even though you're ultimately responsible for approving this exemption. We're, uh, we are responsible for working with BC on their pilot Did you program. ever go to them earlier and say you've got to do something about the public spaces? We've been working with them every step of the way. We were addressing public spaces already shortly after I was made minister with the First Amendment that we put through in September with them. Um, but they also have tools and resources at their disposal in terms of public spaces. That was part of the letter of requirements that they received in the first place. They do have tools at their disposal. 
We're here to work with them to reinforce those tools to make sure that law enforcement has clear direction and that they feel supported in moving forward in the pilot. Because I think what we heard actually at the outset even of the approval, and, and not to misrepresent law enforcement, because they are supportive of Absolutely decriminalization, supportive. but they also raised the issue, the specter of what could happen in public spaces. They didn't feel at the time of this exemption that they had the tools, they testified to that effect, that they had the tools available to them to properly address the issues that could arise and ended up arising in public spaces. My, so the second half of, of what I wanted to ask in that same vein is about the, the process by which you did uh, approve this exemption. And in particular, the idea that the idea, you know, that it's to treat it as a health problem or the health issue, and then to move people instead of from jails to getting treatment, essentially, to, be, right. to end up in recovery. And I know that's multifaceted as well. But I read the latest statistics out of BC was since that provincial government came into power, only 360 beds as of last year had treatment, publicly funded treatment beds had been added. How much consideration did you give to the actual ability once this was decriminalized of people to get help? And were, could, should you not have been more discerning about the lack of that help, the lack of that treatment? So BC has been, we have the BC dashboard of how they've been scaling up uh, their healthcare services since the pilot started in January, 2023. We've been monitoring that data as well. What's driving the overdose deaths that we're seeing is not a lack of services. It's, it's really, it's the toxic drug supply. That's not to say that we don't need more robust services, that they don't need to get more, more treatment beds in place, more harm reduction tools in place. They absolutely do to meet the moment. Um, they have been scaling up. We keep monitoring with them. We've also signed a bilateral agreement with BC to enable more funding to go into this. That being said, we have always looked at this that public health from a public health perspective and health service perspective, there needs to be services available to someone when they need them, meeting them at the moment, and that's what we're going to continue to push. Do you BC acknowledge on. that the provinces that are seeing this crisis unfold are not meeting the moment in that vein? And should that not be taken into account when you're deciding if they can decriminalize the use of these drugs? We are seeing different impacts in different jurisdictions. There's no question in Alberta and Saskatchewan there are numbers that are on the rise. Um, each jurisdiction under their health purview are looking at different models. From where we sit at the federal level, we really don't want, um, you know, we're seeing a lot of polarization on this and we don't want to see an either or between harm reduction and treatment. We are completely focused on ensuring that jurisdictions have all the tools and resources available to them to meet the moment and help people. It's, I'm certainly not trying yeah. to present it as an either yeah. or. I think it's actually a, a, a together thing, right? It's a right. combination. If, if you are going to decriminalize, there needs to be the necessary supports in place to make sure it is adequately treated as a public health issue. Yeah. And isn't that sort of the responsibility of your government if you're allowing that to happen to make sure that, that those treatments and those services are in place? Because where does it feel like they are right now? We all want the same thing. We want people to not be dying in the overdose crisis and we want them getting healthcare services. I think on that piece, we are all on the same page. BC knows that BC in embarking in this pilot understood and made commitments to ramping up their health services alongside the decriminalization. And that's what we continue to push for. That's what in my letter to them in, in approving their amendment today, it was absolutely clear that the expectation is that we continue to ramp up and provide those services. Can you pull decriminalization if that doesn't happen? This is a collaborative effort. I, I don't see us as working in, this is the first pi only pilot of its kind in the country. It's giving us a, really an opportunity to learn from this moment and keep moving forward. And that's what we're gonna continue to do. We, we've addressed the public consumption issue with BC at their request. And BC also knows that they've made commitments to us of ramping up their services, including IO therapies, other, other tools and resources that they need to have available and in place to meet the moment. And that's, we work better when we work together. And you know, with every family that I meet with, every community that I see struggling under this, they really want the tools available to, to get people to help. Just and very, that's what we're focused on. Very quickly in that vein, when you talk about learning from this pilot project, uh, you said today that the request from the city of Toronto to, uh, uh, to embark on a decriminalization project was dormant. Uh, we reached out to the city and, and Toronto Public Health says it continues to be engaged in ongoing discussions with Health Canada on Toronto's request. How, how is that dormant? So I do not currently have any request in front of me from Toronto, Toronto Public Health. It is still sitting with Health Canada. The last iteration of the proposal that was received was 
had inefficiencies and wasn't adequate to move forward. In I know your they, view. It's not ready to move forward. And Mayor Chow herself said a few days ago, I believe it was on Friday, that she recognizes that to embark on a proposal like this, that health services need to be in place. So we're continuing. We will work with every jurisdiction, but we also are very clear in terms of the provincial role in this. And the Prime Minister's been very clear about this. I've been clear about this. Is just like we did in BC, that it, we worked with the province to ensure that there was a robust set of tools in place and that it was a clear understanding of the pilot program. We would do that with other jurisdictions. The province of Ontario says it's dead set against this happening. Does that inhibit you in any way, your government in any way, from approving, though, the, the request once it gets to your desk? Well, if we take a step back on this and we're looking at this as a health issue that requires health services and investments by governments into their health care systems, then that's the starting point. And really, health is the jurisdiction of the province. So do I interpret from that comment that you won't go ahead with that if, if the province of Ontario is against it? We will always work collaboratively with jurisdictions that want to work with us on on how they choose to tackle the overdose crisis in their jurisdiction. Respectfully, though, that, that doesn't answer what I, I, I'm not sure of what you're trying to Respectfully, say. Respectfully, uh, to answer, I would say that we will work with provinces to, to move forward. So if they don't want to move forward, then that's, does it become moot? At this point in time, there is no proposal on my desk from the province. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Minister, I appreciate you making the time for the conversation. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you so much.